What's up, everybody? Hey, how you doing? It's Vegas here and up in the house. We are going to do a little flight attendant thing right here right now. Um, so I'm in a dilemma right now. This is when we're time of the month that we're trying to bid for our schedules for next month. Yes, flight attendants bid for their monthly schedule. Um, it's the beginning of the month. It's like the well, beginning, middle of the month. Um, we bid here at my airline from the 10th to the 13th and um so we have those three days to figure out put in the what schedules we want and then on the 13th um in the afternoon of the 13th we find out um what schedule we got for the next month so with this being november we're bidding for december schedule and uh, i just want to show a little bit how i can work either eight days or I can work a full schedule of like 16 days or uh, yeah 16 18 days out of the month but still get paid the almost the same or at least get the same amount of hours um, just working eight days which is which is kind of crazy but it's unique and that way if I only work eight days, I have an entire 23 days off for the entire month, but I'm still getting paid enough of my salary to where um, I don't have to be struggling for the month or the month after once that paycheck comes through. Um, so I'm going to show you how it is, how it is and everything like that. Um, so get any questions, definitely put them in the comment section. As always, like, comment, share um and subscribe here right here on the youtube um that's the best way to support the, the channel it's the easiest and it's free so definitely um so we'll go down into what we are into our bidding and um we use most most airlines use Flickr. Um, there's a couple of airlines that have their own bidding uh programming um, website and um, app and everything like that but for the majority of airlines they use this um, system called Flickr um, and so we're in here right now we're looking at it and we're looking at these lines um, so I want to show you how what the lines look like in their full capacity um, some people can have it up and down like this where they can see the month from the beginning to the end on um, the beginning at the top of the month at uh, the top of the of the line of uh, the screen and then the uh, end of the month towards the bottom but you can also change the display to have it where's that at horizontally and then everything is put side to side so you can go through and look at the um, the month from left to right as you're reading. I don't like this display as much because it uh, you need to pretty much have it at full screen to kind of see the entire month and you're still going to be missing out on some of the stuff. Um, anyway so so like at the to be able to touch or to be able to choose that line it's kind of cut off if you have it all the way over i mean you still could do it um but it's it's just it's just too spread out for me you know uh, but like i said it all is in preference of how people want to look at their um their bidding so i usually do vertically because it's just easier in my opinion and that's how I started. You know, when I was first starting as a flight attendant and everything, I did everything. We showed everything, you know, uh, vertically. It made it easier for us. So I got used to reading it this way. Um, and also we, like I said, we, we sort things differently and everything. Um, I do credit view because that's usually how it is when it's simple. So this is the, how it is 
if you don't have it sorted in any kind of way i do have a little sort in this but it's not really sorted it's just showing me the values of how of the month and everything like that so this first line uh, right here is basically a turn line okay uh, it's the first line in the bid packet uh, we have a total I can't uh, well besides the reserve lines which I don't have to bid for because I hold a line um, a total of 56 lines total as in just trips all together but uh, this could be multiplied depending on how many of these are uh, chaser lines where it's just one person flying and then regular pairing lines where it's four people flying so like this line right here 56 we'll have four people so four people will be able to get this line versus this line one where it's a chaser line where only one person will be able to get this line okay um so right here we're looking at it and i know it looks kind of confusing especially if you're not into the industry and everything like that but hey we're gonna get through that if you have like i said if you have any questions comments or anything like that definitely put them in the uh, comment section and i'll get to you and i'll answer it for you or we'll make a whole nother video and display it for you all right um so so right here this is a turn line because you can see it just says what the pairing number is and where it starts at where the parent starts at so um if we look at it fully we can see this goes from dallas to san juan and back to dallas um early morning flight get back in the afternoons pretty much a 12 hour day 13 hours duty total um and get paid 10 hours for it because this averages out to five hour or excuse me 10 hours and eight minutes of flying time and that's what we get paid for if you you know we'll go in a video definitely check out for the video for how flight attendants get paid but um 10 hours of flying time so that's 10 hours right there so with 10 hours in a day that you work you're gonna have to work eight to make 80 hours so here you go one two three four five six seven eight and you get christmas off and new year's eve off pretty good right pretty much working um two days out of the week do one day have a day off have a work another day and it's really wednesday and friday you work in wednesday and friday with the exception of christmas so you will work that tuesday and then you won't work again into that following monday which is a pretty good schedule right there by itself 81 hours and 24 minutes of flying time and that's what you will get paid now remind you with these turn lines you're not getting much per diem you'll get a little per diem for that um so-called what is it hour while you're in san juan that's between flights but that's it and remember turn lines your per diem will be taxed versus if you're doing a trip your per diem, your time away from base is not taxed. So we'll look at another one where it's, uh, there's line 16, okay? Four day trips right here. And you got one, two, three, four and a half days of flying. And that's because uh, two of these days are in this month and then the other two days are in the beginning of January. As you can see you come back on January 2nd so be gone a lot longer a lot more you're not home every night um as if in the turn line you're gone for four days and you're working total of uh let's see four eight 12 16 18 days in the month right i only have a one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve days off tw 13 days off excuse me almost forgot the first of december 13 days off for the entire month okay the other one you get 23 days so an extra 10 days off versus um 13 days off but there's a difference there's a balance in here your per diem is not taxed so you're going to get a lot more per diem is almost uh actually we'll, we'll actually put that in there um limes time away from base 
no filter just add it in there uh, wait for me. no sort apply that so your time away from see look so you get a 102 hours away from base on that turn line okay and then versus this trip line or your you have trips 339 hours away from base that's a big difference especially um our per diem right now is two dollars and 95 cents um so think about it with that 100 with that turn line you're going to get about 300 dollars worth of per diem but it's taxed so you're going to get less than that and then with this line with a line that you have trying to get a calculator up so we can do these numbers right let's say 340 hours okay away from base you're going to get an extra thousand dollars um and it's not taxed so that's a big difference right there even though the hours was just about the same 89 versus 81 they're still going to get an extra thousand dollars of pay for working a trip line um let's just do this right here you know what i'm saying we can uh we're gonna add we're gonna do the difference of how much difference of pay you would get if you did that turn line versus that that trip line so we'll do line one which is at 181.24 an hours versus a, a trip line and we'll do this one with this 8126 so two minutes off okay two minutes off and we'll see the difference and pay between both of these and how it can affect you you know what i'm saying um so like i said this is the perfect this is a perfect view for what we're talking about here so we got 81 hours of, of pay credit hours 100 hours of time away from base and 23 days off okay that's line one and then we'll go over to here like line 14 like i said 81 26 just two minutes off of pay 320 hours of per diem and 15 days off incredible right 15 days off is still a lot of days there's only a difference between having an extra eight days off like almost a week um or more than a week off but the pay difference that's where it's going to be different you can have more time off but less pay versus away from home a little bit more or well, a lot more but you're getting paid more um so you're not home as much and everything like that so but this is a good it's a good example to see how it is so that's my dilemma now do i want to stay home more and still get paid almost the same as far as just working um working the same amount of hours uh, throughout the month but less days doing it in less days than a trip um i can be home more i can do a little bit more stuff i'm gonna have more days off so i can go travel a little bit more if i want to go somewhere else or if i want to pick up something like even when i'm picking up more hours i have plenty of time for that i can still pick up eight more days of work and still get 15 days off um now would that equate make it easier for me to make that money transfer because it would be the same amount of money or not we don't know we'll have to see so we'll check it out okay so let's do these numbers right here now we're gonna go it depends on the pay scale and everything like that as well we're gonna look at three different pay scales okay um depending on where you at in seniority we'll do if you're a first time first year uh say we're get after that first let's let's do the second year so we got your second year pay we'll do second year pay and then we'll do six year pay and then we'll do top that at 13 years pay all right just to look at and see 
the difference in pay for each each seniority and how it affects you when you're trying to figure out how you will willing to bid for something like this okay so our second year pay right now is 3018. And then six year pay is 40.39. And topped out pay is 58.68. So let's see here what we got here. So, uh, ba -ba -ba. 3018 times 80. I wish I had a calculator did time on here. Not a converter. There is a time one. We'll see. See if that works. But um, 80, 81. We'll do. We'll do 81 hours. Around. So we, let's see. Twenty two thousand. Forty-four dollars and fifty-eight cents. That's a. I, I like that two forty-four, uh, four four-four. Um, hmm. So it converts. So I don't have a. Okay. Uh, 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 standard. No. Oh. Um. Let's see, and then um, our per diem is two ninety five. So two dollars ninety five times a hundred and two. So we're gonna say that's about three hundred dollars. Like I said, about three hundred dollars. Right, so now we go 4039 times 81. As you can see, that is a big jump right there already in pay. There's almost an extra thousand dollars in pay just for um, four years, right? And then uh, was it 58? Yeah, 58, 68 times 81. And then another jump, a huge jump. There we go. Now this time, this, this per diem is gonna be the same across all boards. Doesn't matter what your seniority is, that is your same amount regardless of your seniority. All right, so. Now let's look like this is basically this is basically going to be the same right here. These numbers right here are going to be basically the same. They are going to be the same because it's, you know, they're the same because we're doing the same amount of hours. But we're going to look at the per diem. All right. Look at the per diem, the difference in the per diem, right? Nine hundred and forty four. dollars flat out 320 944 dollars that's crazy right that is 600 dollars more than you would get if you did turns versus turns and it's not taxed so that 944 is not going to be taxed that's just yours boom straight out the pocket put it in your hand right um that 300 dollars is going to be taxed along with the rest of your check all right so we can look at some of these differences on whether or not it's worth it to do turn lines or to do trips okay of course you're going to be making more money if you do the trips because of your per diem but you're going to spend more money probably because you're going to be might you might be eating out you might be snacking you're going to be buying 
um, waters and, and something to drink and stuff like that. So you got to prepare for that stuff. If you're not well, if you're not disciplined enough to meal prep and bring a, a canister or like one of these to have it filled up when you get to the hotel so you don't have to buy waters and stuff like that. Um, or if the hotels give you waters and stuff like that. So there's the differences in pay. So there's a lot of factors in thinking about what you want to do. Um, now, if you a person that likes to be home a lot, doing turn lines could be a good thing for you if it covers your bills. You know what I mean? Especially if you're a senior person. A senior person probably doesn't want to be out of well, and that still covers their bills. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and this is a monthly um, um, uh, salary right here. This is not uh, your your week uh, by week this is for the entire month this is how much we get paid for the entire month depending on what your seniority is now you also got to think is it worth it i mean i think after a month only two thousand four hundred forty four dollars that's that's kind of tight just doing turns um right there as a you know second year flight attendant um it does like i said you know, and people will tell you all across the board, being a first year, first couple of years as a flight attendant is rough. It's, it's a struggle. Uh, you're not making as much money as you think you will be making, but it does jump up after a few years. So you have to look at it. So what's the deal? Do I bid for staying home more or do I bid for being away from more and getting more money um, with, the, with the per diem? It's, it's, it's a conflict it's a, it's a conflict in the mental you know what I'm saying all the time as a trying to bid um with me i am a um season f uh, f attendant so i've been here um i'm topped out so you kind of see what i'll be making for this month uh, depending on where i'm gonna be uh, if i stay home more so it, it's it's a constant battle for me to figure out if i'm gonna be staying home more or do i take trips and be away more um and make a little bit more money so i mean that's that, that's gonna be an extra almost thousand dollars being away from home more um and having less days off having eight days less off and being away from home more so you gotta figure out what do you want to do um that's it's that's a very interesting concept right there um wow so does that thousand dollars justify taking trips or or not so what would you do let me know in the comments exactly what would you do in this in this situation if you will be away from home more and have less days off for an extra thousand dollars would you do it or would you just rather stay home and get a thousand dollars less and be home every single day of the month you let me know right there in the comments and everything um once again if you have any questions or anything that you want to know about being a flight attendant let me know We'll either discuss it in the comment section or I'll answer you, put in uh, whatever, or we'll make a whole new video about it. But you know who it is. This is your boy Vegas. It says right here on the overhead bins. Yes, it does. Um, but let me know and uh, we'll, we'll keep talking. In the meantime, fly safe. Be good to your, your fellow co-workers and passengers. Please say hi when you walk on by. Thank you. We out.